Hi, everybody. So, I'm a kernel developer. I uh, like to program in C. I'm the maintainer for the little touchscreen library project. Um, I also, I work for Ginzinger Electronic Systems in Austria, who support my trip to Fossum this year, which is awesome. And I started this little project, uh, and I hope you all want to install Coreboot on your laptops today. Also, I use Tor, do that too. I use it every day, it's great. Don't underestimate that. So, I think a, a project has really won, you know, when you use it as a verb. <laughs> so, in that sense, let's curl an image and Coreboot your laptop. We are talking about the X230 only here, but that's just because it happens to be the laptop I own. There's no reason at all why we wouldn't port this project to any laptop supported by Coreboot today. That is a totally useless slide. You know the laptop. You can look it up. It's old. I like it. So we're going to use the, the, the Coreboot project. That's all we're going to use. What's that? It's a replacement for your BIOS. It can build a replacement for your proprietary vendor BIOS. It's free software, it's great. It does hardware initialization and is uh, built in a quite modular way so you can choose how it looks to you. It can look like a UEFI uh, system to you and you choose that using so-called payloads. So just like, just like we, just like there's the Linux kernel, and uh, most of us would leave the job of configuring the thing, figure out a working configuration, and build the thing to distributors. And that's uh, nothing different with Corbett. So it's all there, but how to configure, how to build, plus with Corbett you won't build an x86 binary you run, you build a binary image, you would then figure out how to flash to your, to your motherboard's uh, flash chip. So there are core boot distributions right now. One is called LibreBoot. Uh, you might have heard of that. There's the Heads firmware project, which is an awesome project. Uh, you have to, you have to uh, check that out. Um, and there's our project. There are, there are more distributions, actually. I've heard of one. I can't remember the name right now, uh, today. They all release binary images you can grab, and they are ready to run on your motherboard's SPI flash. So how do we fit into this picture? Uh, you and you will see that it's a really boring project. So um, uh, I'm sorry, but the, you are in a really boring talk to, um, because that's the first Git commit of our project, and all it is is me backupping my configuration for my Corbett build. So that's all, and that I honestly thought that that's it, and that uh, repository will is done. I will change the config a few times. I change, uh, I refresh, but I was wrong. So we try to make Corbett as easy to install for you as possible. And once you have that install, as easy to use as possible. Really boring, actually. So as soon as we support the thing, uh, you shouldn't have any excuse anymore to run the vendor BIOS. So we include a build system. We build reproducibly, which is important when you release binary uh, images. We don't expect you to trust a random binary. Um, we don't offer any security feature whatsoever at runtime. Uh, all you could argue is that we build from free software, which is great, and um, we give you the opportunity to to flash uh, your your system anytime you want to a known good state. But you cannot say anything more. For more, take a look at the Hess project. That's awesome. What do I mean by easy to install? Well, for these laptops, usually. For first time installation of Coreboot, you need to disassemble the thing. 
unfortunately, but that's the case. So we try to document this as good as possible. So if you don't know what to do after reading our README, we have done something wrong. We, we even try to tell you where you can buy this clip or whatever and how to connect and whatever. In this case, using a Raspberry Pi, in case you have that lying around. If you don't, we offer a different, we support a different option that is even cheaper. Um, but once you have that connected for your first time installation, all you have to do with our project is run one script per chip. And that's it. In this case, we have two chips and two scripts, top and bottom, and you're done. And reboot and core boot is installed. What, once you have it flashed and running, it should be easy to use, and it is. We simply use CBIOS, and that's nothing except when you press escape, like it says here, it gives you a boot menu, and that's it. In case you have a USB live stick or something connected, you, you can choose to, to, to boot that. So, um, I mentioned we support the X230 only right now, but uh, I would gladly help you port it over to your Coboot supported laptop. It's really easy, you just need a little bit of time. Also, we, for the X230, we released two different images. So you have the choice between basically that's ugly looking visually, but built from 100% free software except for the Intel microcode update binary, or looking really awesome and really beautiful, but including the Intel's proprietary video BIOS <coughs> as part of the build. That's currently, but, but also, I have to say that this might as well be just a configuration issue and we can improve this. Um, I'm glad for any help there. If you have a better configuration than we have, please say so. Uh, so what do we release? We just uh, try to release about once a month and uh, just take Corboot's master branch at the day of the release. That's actually how we are supposed to use the Corboot project. Um, we take the latest version of the, all the components we include, which is CBIOS and Intel's microcode update, uh, which results in some upstream work. We uh, ensure that the latest versions of these components are in Corbus repositories, so this uh, uh, sometimes needs to, to patch Corbus. Patches are usually accepted really quickly. Also, when we do a release and test uh, on our laptop, we contribute to Corbus board status project that also is part of a uh, core boot repository, which results in uh, this supported motherboards wiki page you um, can search for. So we, in, this, in this way, we make sure that our, the laptop we support will be supported, will stay supported by core boot. That's in fact it. So I wanted to do a little demo until I figured you won't see anything when I reboot, so I record it. <laughs> um, so what we have here is just a release tarball extracted, and that's it, with some preparations from our, I'm sorry, from our documentation. We run a X230 script that's called X230 because you run it on the X230, you want to install code. That's our main script for updating um, the skulls image uh, when you already have your first time installation done, you know, when you're already running one. But it's really just executing the script and choosing which ver version, which of the two set images you want to flash. In this case, I'm using the free one, which you will see in a second, doesn't look very well, whatever. But there are people who value that a lot, that you don't uh, include binaries. So you see, we don't use, even Grub doesn't see uh, the correct frame buffer size, but as soon as Linux takes over, things are fine. So functionality-wise, it's okay, but we can do better. It just should be easy for you to get something working 
as quickly as possible and it's as seamlessly as possible. So I do the same thing again, essentially with the, the other image. And, and a really nice person from GitHub recently drew a logo for us. We uh, have included now and you will see that. So here you see the scripts. There are scripts called external run. They are only for your first time installation process because you don't run it on the machine you are installing corporate to. You run it externally. So that's basically the concept. Except there are just scripts, the images, and documentation, and that's it. We flash that. So, and you see, after your first time installation process, we, by, by default, provide you with a setup that you don't need to disam disassemble your, your laptop. You can update just by flashing online, if you will. And that's it. And with that, I can even take questions. Thank you very much. Yeah. Hi. Uh, I was wondering why you need to make a physical access to the chip for the first yeah. installation while you are able to do it by software after that. Yeah. The reason for that is uh, in this particular case, the, there are multiple different mechanisms flash chips provide uh, for write protection. In this case, there's, there's a Intel file descriptor, a part of the Intel file descriptor that needs to be changed um, in order to disable this write protection. Um, but, um, uh, yeah. Um, to, yeah, you, you won't be allowed to, to, to access this, to write to this memory until, in this case, you flip this bit and you can do this by flashing externally. There are so many different other write protection mechanisms, but in this case, it's, it's doable. Yeah? But you need to disassemble. Is there any other question? Um, is there any possibility to um, edit a more setting in the BIOS, like for example, like virtualization settings, RAM, or any other thing like we see in a common BIOS, in a proprietary BIOS? Uh, is there a possibility to, to, to have settings you can change yeah. as part of, yes, actually there is, and we include, um, we include a core boot payload that does exactly that. We include that by default now you can do some basic settings like um, USB power always on and some, some uh, settings you, you can do, yeah. Uh, but you have to flash it again to apply the new settings? No, you don't. Ah, okay. No, you don't. Okay, thanks. All right. Oh, I have one minute left. One last question. This laptop's flash. Um, the question was how big the image is. Um, we, we, we do a little trick here. We release an image that is 4 meg but the flash chip is actually 16 meg, uh, uh, 12 meg, sorry. So we just, um, we just uh, put the thing into our tarball that we flash because we select the region we flash, you know. Can the flash be made uh, read-only after uh, yes. flashing? We support, yes, we, we support um, choosing to uh, write protect, to again write, re-protect uh, the whole thing 
as part of our scripts, just as a command line option, yeah. But then you are forced to disassemble, but, well. Uh, you uh, said that in this closed version there was a four BIOS from Intel. Do you have a um, source version of the four BIOS? And, uh, is it a full fall BIOS? I, I have no idea about this BIOS thing. Um, ah, okay, the um, replacement for the for Intel's video BIOS. Yes, exactly. Um, that's a that's a part of the C BIOS project, and that's uh, called C VGA BIOS. That's a part of the C BIOS project. They they built that. They they write that. Okay, so that's not um, something different. That is totally. For example, I remember that uh, that there was, was always the firmware issues with uh, some certain drivers and something, and it's something different completely. Uh, I'm not sure I got that, it's, but okay. it's 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 really a replacement for Intel's okay. video BIOS. Okay. It's really a drop-in replacement by the CBIOS project. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the questions. Let's thank the speaker again.